You want to get the best quality prints out of your filaments? Stay tuned. Hey guys, it's me Jeff. Welcome back to the corner. Glad to have you here. So, um, recently, uh, this company called Yusu, they sent me a box of filament and asked me if I'd do uh, a review on it and share my thoughts on my channel. And I'm like, sure, why not? I'd be happy to review filament for anybody, right? Like, not a problem. So, but I thought it would be fun to sort of go through as opposed to, because you, you basically with filament, you want it to print good and look good, right? Like, you want it to be easy to print and you want the, the final product to look nice. But... How do you get from those points? What do you look for? So I'm kind of going to show you how I kind of, whenever I get a new different filament and stuff, what I go through from the unboxing to the slicer settings till the final print, okay? So I hope you find this informational and here we go. So here's the box of filament that uh, Yusu uh, kindly gave me to uh, test. So I'm going to have a look at it and I'm going to show you guys kind of what I look for when I um, buy a filament. But first, let's have a look at this. It is um, Yusu 3D filament. What's your innovation with Yusu filament? It is a uh, Yusu green PLA spare nozzle cleaning needle. Oh, I wonder if there's more than filament than just in here. That's kind of interesting, actually. We got PLA here. Materials available at uh, ysfilament.com. That's going to be the website, ysfilament.com, that you can pick some of the stuff up. It also has, oh, look at that. Got a cute little, but life's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Forrest Gump quote, great movie. There's a website and a contact us. And let's um, open this up here. Oh. Can I get that? There we go. All right. So we open it up. Oh, we got um, a big... Oh, look at that. Uh, can you see that, actually? Here. A nice big smiley face that says, thank you. That's awesome. Everything all right. We're happy that you're happy. What's next? You can follow us on Facebook or join our group. Um, share your experience. Oh, problems. Oh, <laughs> that's cute. Uh, please don't give us a negative review. Give us a chance to solve the problem. I think that's fair, right? I think that's kind of cool, actually. I think that for like a new user... For filament it kind of gives you how to troubleshoot and it does come with a spare nozzle for like a creality machine that's kind of nice i actually have never seen filament rolls come with a spare nozzle let's have a look at the filament uh in the bag the vacuum pack and it's got a nice um indent here concave conca concave convex it's sucked in right and you can see that there's a good vacuum form on here so that's a good thing to look for um, it does come uh, with a Ziploc resealable bag. I have a dehydrator, so I um, actually just dehydrate my filament. Let's uh, open this boy, bad boy up. So, now if I didn't poke the hole in there, I just was hoping to get some sort of vacuum sound. Let's just pop that desiccant bag out. It says a one kilo roll. Is there a tag on the side of here? PLA. No, it says one kilo. Yeah, right there. So filaments 3D. Uh, material PLA. I don't know if you can read that or not. There we go. Uh, it's a nice green color. Oh, that's in French. Temperature English. There we go. <laughs> material diameter printing temp 190 to 225. Uh, heated bed at zero to 60 and one kilo. Oh, so it's a hundred percent. It's got the little scale here on the side. I actually like these little scales. I think they're very helpful. This is a clear spool and I like that. Sometimes with the darker spools, you don't get to see obviously. And then you'll have like little holes with this on it. So you don't know what your core is going to look like or anything till you get down to it. So it's kind of, you know, you're going like this, how heavy is it and stuff like this, but the wine's pretty good. It's not 100% perfect, but I'd say it's at 90% perfect. So I like the look of it, as you can see here. And you can't, we don't have smell of vision here, but there was no ugly, horrible scent that came out of this bag or anything. And I'm gonna, I just sniffed the filament now and it's actually pretty scentless, which is nice. It's a nice green color. That's pretty much all it is for the unboxing. As I say, I, let's go run some tests on this. So at this point in time, I'm just gonna unroll a bunch of filament and then I'm gonna measure the filament diameter in several different areas, probably over about uh, 10 or 15 feet or so. I want to 
see what the average diameter is. This roll is actually pretty good. It's within plus or minus 0 0.03, which is what most filaments are. If they are a little bit more, or if you want, basically what you do to calibrate your filament is you take a bunch of measurements, you add them together, you divide by the amount of measurements you took, and then you insert that number right here into the uh, filament diameter. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to calibrate the default extrusion width because different filaments have different extrusion widths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, drag in a box into Prusa Slicer just like this. And we're going to make it hollow. Basically, we're not going to do it in Vosmo because I want to do two outside perimeters. And by doing that, I'm going to um, take away the uh, top layers. I'll just do two bottom layers, and I'll do zero infill. So this is going to create basically a vase mode, but with two perimeters. Now the reason why I'm doing two perimeters is because my default extrusion width is 0 0.45, or two of them would be 0 0.90. So I'll be able to measure that better with the calipers in my experience. And I'm going to go ahead and print this. So I printed off the cube. Let's just do a real quick check for dimensional accuracy. 87, 88, 87, uh, 87. So yeah, so it's within three one thousandths of a mil. 89, and uh, you know, depending on where you're measuring it on the side, 88. So we're, you know, you're, you're pretty bang on where you're supposed to be. That's kind of the whole point here, is um, you're not too far out. Of, you're not too far out of whack um, because if you're too far out, you'll need to make adjustments, as I said, to the flow. Right? If you're over extruding or whatnot, a little bit of under extrusion to me, I think, is better than a whole lot of over extrusion. With my test, I found I was under extruding. Um, by a very minimal amount, so I wouldn't really worry too much about it. But if you wanted to do the math, you would take the diameter that you wanted, or the 0 0.90, divided by the diameter that you currently have, and it gives you a 1.02 multiple. Then simply just fill out the extrusion multiplier area on the slicer. So I printed a quick temp tower, and I'm noticing quite a lot of stringing on this. Um, and it shouldn't really be stringing that much in my experience for most filaments. So I did run it through the dryer and I got the same amount of stringing. So I'm assuming it's the filament needs to probably be printed at a lower temperature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look on their website to see if they have any documentation that might help. Just like their card in the box specified that if you have any trouble, it's not trouble, but it just, it looks like it might be like a lower printing temp or something. So it actually says to print at 180 to 185 and then 195 to 205. But I was getting stringing at these high temperatures. So I'm gonna try a bit lower. And also with this, you can also, there are slicing profiles. So we're doing use of PLA. And I'm using Prusa Slicer. So I would download their bundle. Their, their, their bundle is at 140, a 92 extrusion multiplier. And their filament overrides are 2 mils and 40. I went to Teaching Tech's website here. I went to Retraction Tuning. And just like the profile has, it's at 184. I just did the bed at 60 because that's typically where I print at. I um, ran through a few of these tests and found out 60 mil was the better retraction for my Prusa. And I'm sitting about 1.9 is actually my best tower. So I'll add that into the Prusa Slayer profile, 1.9 and 60 under the filament overrides. Once I have that done, I'm going to slice this, um, this red-eyed croc that I have the STL for. And it's going to be a 16-hour print. And then I'm going to export it. And we're going to look at that when we're done. So as I said, I went to Teaching Tech's website and 
got the um, the towers printed for retraction so I figured out the ideal retraction for my particular machine I highly suggest you go visit his website it's got lots of tools and information but basically you want to do a temperature tower to figure out what temperature the filament prints at the best and a retraction tower to figure out what retraction you need so yeah I had those new settings for the Prusa which was 1.9 and 60 I used that and I printed my friend the croc here now isn't that awesome that's like a great model check that out right there's so much detail so i actually printed two of these guys out this was with the lower settings and i just want to show you in the joints and stuff there's no uh, bl uh blops or zits or anything like that uh, and no stringing this one was done at the higher temperature and let's see here focus you can see some as well as on some of the spikes and stuff. You can kind of see how it's got a bit of stringing there. This one at the lower temperature is so much better. All right, so I thought that would be really cool. It's a nice little model. Twins. I printed some chain mail. Again, if you're having stringing and blobs and zits, um, this won't come out very well at all. I um, ended up printing the uh, testing toaster too, which is a really awesome print. It has some nice stuff, but I did print this at the higher temperature. So if I open it up, you'll actually see, um, I don't know if I can see in there or not. You got a, bit, a fair bit of stringing in there. This was kind of my clue print. So that's why I went back to the drawing board and sort of looked at the documentation, lowered the temperatures, ran the retraction test and whatnot. So, cause typically I'll run like a temperature tower and it'll be good to go. So I did that and I ran these tests and I'm like, there's something not quite right. Yeah, these guys are great, aren't they? I love them. <laughs> Check this out. They just hang out with you and go around. But yeah, these flexible um, animals have been around like the Flexi-Rexy and stuff like that. But, you know, recently we've seen an influx of, I think it started, what was that? The Crystal Dragon or whatever, which was this really long dragon. And then a bunch of people have made all sorts of these wonderful models and stuff. And it's just great, right? It's great for the community. They're really fun little prints to do and stuff. And um, let's get back on track here, though. I want to say I want to say thank you to Yusu for uh, sending me a box of filament to try out. And I just wanted to say it's super helpful to show you guys kind of how to get the best quality prints out of your filament right so cole's notes version you want to inspect your packaging make sure it's all good your vacuum seal is good because if you get moisture in your filament you'll lead to stringing and some problems so you want to make sure it's dry um, you want to do a temp tower and a retraction tower to sort of dial in those settings what are the good temperatures to to, um, to print it at and what are the good retraction for it um, i do a flow test because it just different filaments kind of flow out of the nozzle a little bit differently so that works for me and yeah if you follow all those steps um, when you first get a new roll of filament or a new brand of filament it probably takes maybe an hour to 90 minutes to sort of run these off really quickly and you'll greatly greatly enhance your printing experience um, and as I said with the uh, use of filament um, they had great support on their website which I went to where they had a slicer profile as well as their settings for their PLAs and all their different filaments. So I think that's really great. So if you do have problems with filaments, you can always go to their websites because the manufacturer makes it or imports it or knows where they get it from. They probably have the best profiles and the best settings to help you out. So if you like what you've seen in this video, please uh, give me a thumbs up. If you're cruising through the channel, hit the subscribe button. And until next time, enjoy your printing guys. Okay, see ya.